Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 285. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Today is Wednesday, June 7th, 2023. Again, episode 285. If you're watching us live, say hello and where you're watching from. And I'd like to say a special hello to our replay warriors as well. In tonight's live stream, I'm going to be sharing two projects from the Inked and Tiled suite. I've got a fun card for you today. And then this is actually a, an envelope that holds a tea bag and a note card. It will also hold, hold a gift card as well. Um, so that's a fun, quick and easy project. I'm going to show you um, sort of how you can come up with the score lines for, because I know tea bags have all varying sizes, um, but we're going to be using a base of six by six. And I'm going to show you some tips or tricks to figure out um, how you figure out your score lines for that. So. Let's see. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is watching for your questions and comments tonight. If you do have a question, put a cue in front of that question. That will make sure that it gets to my cue. I will be doing live Q&A, saving that for the end of the live stream so that I can focus on tonight's projects from start to finish. But you can ask me any questions and I'll stay on until the end till I've answered all your questions for you. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. Um, please use my current host code. The easiest way to do that is to use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code to your order for you. Now, if you're placing a big order of $150 or more, you don't want to add the host code to that because you'll earn stamp rewards on that order from Stampin' Up!, you will also earn pixie perks from me as well. So we've got a couple of things going on this month. My nose is itchy today. <laughs> um, we've got a Starter Kit Plus special, so you can get $155 in product for only $99. That's an additional $30 over our normal Starter Kit price or normal starter kit value. It's normally $125 for $99, but for June only, it's $155 for $99. We do also have, we're in the midst of a demonstrator pre-order for some new online exclusive products, which means you can also add the pre-order products to a starter kit as well. It is the beginning of a catalog, so it's a great time to get some products off your wish list at a discount. And then as a demonstrator, you can enjoy the demonstrator discount of 20% for as long as you remain active with an opportunity to increase that to 25% discount. So um, the other thing going on this month is the designer series paper sale. There are 13 select designer series papers that are 15% off. I almost said 30, that would not be right. 15% uh, off, including the um, eclectic something or other. That's a $30 pack of paper. So I think it's $25.50 with the 15% discount. And if you are a demonstrator, just remember you get your discount on top of the designer series paper sale price. Also, that designer series paper sale price applies to those designer series papers that you add to your starter kit. So it's a good way to kind of double up there. Um, so I think that's all for the month of June. I do have some show and tell. Let me give you sneak peeks of tonight's projects. Again, this is a little tea bag envelope. In here, I've got a tea bag and then just a quick, easy, simple note card that you can add in there. Again, a gift card will fit as well, and I'll show you that when I demonstrate this project. Um, this is actually created without the envelope punch board. I know it looks like an envelope punch board project that uh, has been long retired by Stampin' Up! So I'm going to show you how you can do that on the Simply Scored. And then this is just a quick and easy card layout, but I love the three strips of coordinating cardstock with the heat embossing on there. So we'll do a little bit of heat embossing tonight. I do have a quick show and tell from Nolan. If you're new here, I typically have show and tell from one or both of my kiddo kiddos. Sometimes I show and tell some things from customers as well, or myself, depending on the, <laughs> depending on the week. But our rising second grader Nolan is Lego obsessed and I'm not gonna be able to fit the whole platform into the uh, camera view here but he's working on a project so I think maybe next week he'll have more to show you he's using a lot of Minecraft characters here I think those are called piglins 
I believe. I'm not up on all my Minecraft lingo, but yeah, he's starting to build a whole little vignette here. So that's what he wanted to show you tonight. I believe this on the corner is a tree, if I can turn it sideways without breaking it. So yeah, that is show and tell from Nolan again, our rising second grader. All right, we're gonna jump into the 3D project, although it's not totally 3D, it's a pretty flat 3D project. But this is just a fun, quick and easy um, project. I'm trying to think of some other ideas. You could, this would be a great tip envelope for maybe a waiter or a hairstylist or your nail technician. Um, kind of a cool way to give tips. The uh, finished dimensions are, let me tell you that really quickly. It's three and three quarters by three and one quarter is the size of the envelope. The little note card on the inside is three inches by three and a half. So three by three and a half. So it's just a cute little size there. Again, the note card's optional, but we will make that tonight. And the tea bag size, because I know there's a bunch of different sizes. I ordered these from Amazon because I'm actually going to a... Um, sort of a stamping up event this weekend, a tea party, um, Hattie Walker's event. But this tea bag is three inches by three and a half. So same size as the note card. Um, again, tea bags are kind of all assorted sizes. I don't know if this is a normal size, but three by three and a half. Is, that's a big one. Yeah. That's what Brian says. This is a big tea bag. I'm pretty sure that it is from the UK as well. I don't know. I ordered it off of Amazon. <laughs> so it looked fancy and I bet they're yummy, yummy, yummy. So um, we're going to start with a six by six inch piece of designer series paper. And before I jump into the project, let me show you in the catalog, the products we're using today. That's the, oh, I said the inked and tiled uh, suite. It's the inked botanical suite but it's the inked and tiled bundle. One of these days I will get the names of products correct. <laughs> um, but you can find that on pages 94 and 95 of the annual catalog. I love this suite because it's a punch bundle in the suite, which get, makes it a great price. So for $80.75, you get a punch bundle, but it's a punch pack. So you get two punches in it. I'm going to show you that now because I always forget. So here's the stamp set, inked and tiled. It's got some great sentiments, and I think we're actually using one, two, three of them today. Easy to mix and match, great for all year round. So inked and tiled, and this is the punch pack that you get. Let me show you what they look like on the back side. Very, very cool punches to work with. I'm going to show you a cool trick with each of them tonight if you haven't already seen it. And in the sweet collection, you also get the designer series paper, which is a six by six. You know how I love my six by six projects. And here's a closer look at what that designer series paper looks like. So we'll do a quick flip through. This is my swatch book that I ordered from Brian King. He's my upline. upline. I know you guys always ask when I show the swatch books. I don't know what I would do without them. This is a great pack of paper. I love these colors together. This will be beautiful for the fall as well. All right, so colors, Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, Lost Lagoon, Petal Pink Pool Party. And then it also comes with the Lost Lagoon quarter inch bordered ribbon, which we're not actually using tonight, but it's a beautiful ribbon. We're using the uh, twine. <laughs> What's this called, the natural twine? I know it's called something else, but I'm blanking. It's been one of those weeks we traveled. Um, gosh, we've been traveling every weekend since I feel like forever. Uh, but we just got back from Wilmington, North Carolina. We celebrated Brian's brother's wedding, Logan and Annalise. It was a wonderful celebration. I think I clocked, what was it, over 13,000 steps on Saturday because I was busting a move on the dance floor. So <laughs> actually, we all were. All four of us were on the dance floor, weren't we? Lily kept going, can we go? And we're like, no, we're dancing. <laughs> all right, so six by six inches. Let's jump into the project. Too much chatter today. Um, six by six. I'm going to bring in the Simply Scored. And you'll notice that I've got, ignore the three inch line. I keep thinking I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove that. I put that on there and I never use it. But the six inch line, I just take a Sharpie to go right down the six inch mark. And I'm gonna grab a tea bag. I've never tried Assam tea. Have you tried Assam tea? No. 
All right, so one of the things I do when I'm trying to figure out score lines to do an envelope like this, uh, when you do a diagonal score lines on a square piece of paper, it actually kind of stretches your paper a little bit further because you can get, I've just, um, I mean, in my experience, you can fit more things when you turn paper to a diagonal uh, to get the diagonal score line. So I looked on my Simply Scored and kind of did measurements here. I see that it's three inches wide and three and a half inches tall. And so I was trying to kind of keep those dimensions in mind here. And I'm gonna line up the points of each of the six by six along that Sharpie line. The Sharpie line really helps to make sure that we're lining up those points along the same score line. So that's, I get a lot of questions about why I do that. It's just that you can make sure, because if you didn't have the Sharpie line, you might go off to the side here and think that you're on the right score line, but you're not. So that just helps making sure that you're all lined up there. And I first started by basically taking the tea bag here and centering it at that six inch mark. Now again, I said it was three inches wide or in width, yep. So you wanna have like an inch and a half on either side of that center point, which is six inches. And then I went another um, eighth of an inch to give a little bit of space. So that being said, and let me make sure I get my notes here. The only reason why I'm showing you this is the tea bags you have might be slightly different size. So this would be how you would sort of eyeball it to change up your measurements. So uh, with that being at sort of the four and a half inch mark and seven and a half inch, which is where the edges of the tea bag are, I'm going to go an eighth of, inch, eighth of an inch more than that. So I'm actually going to score at, let's see, seven and five eighths. Of course, I do the right side first. Seven and five eighths and four and three eighths. And I'm just making sure that I'm holding my paper right along that center line, basically putting some pressure with my left hand here. And so those score lines, which you're not going to be able to see, but they're about an eighth of an inch on either side of the tea bag here. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is rotate this to the opposite corners. And now this time we want to make sure that we turn the tea bag sideways. Okay. Now remember, if I put it up to the edge here, it's about three and a half. Now half of three and a half is one and three quarters, a little bit of math here. So with that six inch mark in the center, we're sort of at four and a quarter and seven and three quarters. So then I'm going to go an eighth of an inch outside of that. And we're going to do four and one eighth and seven and seven eighths. Okay, so take your time. Uh, my recommendation is you kind of figure out the measurements. Once you figure it out once, more than likely you're gonna have multiple tea bags you'll be making envelopes for. So just make sure you jot down your measurements. Then you don't have to keep doing this whole switcheroo here each time you make these. So I'm gonna repeat those measurements one more time in case you get the same tea bags as I did. Again, I found these in an assortment on Amazon, 40 to a pack. Um, I'm happy to share a link as well. Uh, I'll put that, I'll put the link in the description. How's that? Uh, okay, so again, we've got four and three eighths, seven and five eighths. Then I rotated it. And then we're doing four and one eighth and seven and seven eighths. And then what you've got here is you can kind of eyeball it. It's going to be hard for you to see the score lines on there, but the tea bag is going to fit right inside that little envelope. Okay. Hopefully those tips helped you. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is fold and burnish on all the score lines. Now I don't have a template for this per se, but I think I will create one for the project sheet. Again, with the project sheet, I'm gonna include the measurements of this particular project, but you may need to adjust them depending on the size of the tea bags you have. So what you'll see here is we've got kind of a crisscross of the score lines. Uh, all we're gonna do is remove those triangles. So I'm just gonna cut up each of the score lines to the intersection of the score line and remove that triangle in the corner. Okay, I do actually kind of remove the score lines completely on this. I find that it closes, the envelope closes a little bit easier if you do that. 
So just work your way around. This is one of the things that the envelope punch board would do sort of automatically for you when you punched it. But to be honest, I don't miss my envelope punch board as much as I thought I would. It took me several years to get to this point. <laughs> But once I started figuring out how to do diagonal score lines on the Simply Scored, um, I don't miss it as much. I still have one, though, that I use occasionally. So, so that's what we've done there. Okay. Now, I did use a non-directional pattern. Um, that makes it a little bit easier because, again, we're scoring on the diagonal. If you had a directional pattern, your pattern is going to just end up being diagonal. Okay. So that's the only thing to keep in mind when you're picking your patterned paper. Originally, I was going to have this envelope be portrait because the tea bag is portrait, but I didn't love the way that the paper lined up, so I just switcherooed and decided to have it be landscape. And if this point bothers you like it bothers me, I actually am going to trim that away. If it doesn't bother you, just leave it the way that it is. But what I did was I basically just tucked it underneath just so I could see where the overlap is. So I just took my ruler and measured from these two side flaps to that point. It's about a half of an inch of extra hanging over. Okay, so I'm just going to come in with my paper trimmer. And again, this is something you can gauge based on the size of your tea bag. I'm going to fold, so again, this well, this is in portrait now. I'm going to fold this one flap so I've got a flat edge here. But I'm just going to line up this point on the second vertical line from the cutting groove. And that is the half inch point. Each of these are a quarter of an inch. Whoops, that would be my scoring tool. <laughs> I'm just trimming off a little half inch. Okay. So then what we've got is we'll fold in the two sides and fold this up and you'll see that that meets right up to where the intersection of the side flaps are. I'm going to come in and corner round this top. This is going to be the top of our envelope using the detailed trio punch. This is retired, but any corner rounder will do like so. Okay. All right, so liquid glue, and we can put this baby together. I like to come in with the two side flaps. Now, they overlap just slightly. And my tip here is that I'm going to put just a little dot of glue right there at the point on the front, and then a little dot of glue right at the point on the back, so that when those meet up, the glue is not going to be in our way. And it kind of secures both sides. Okay, don't be too heavy handed with the glue because you don't want a bunch oozing out and then you'll just stick your flaps to the inside of the envelope. And again, the rounded point, which is not a, that's, that's an oxymoron, a rounded point. The rounded part here, that's our top flap. So I'm going to come in and put liquid glue to close up the bottom. I like to go sort of around the whole periphery here, but not all the way to the edge there. Okay, so I'm just going to be, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch from where that score line is there. And then we'll just work our way around with just a thin line of adhesive. And then just press that down. And then we have this adorable little pocket. Again, um, I sized it for this tea bag, but you can also fit a gift card. Let me show you that. It's a little tall for a gift card, but you could absolutely put a note card in here and a gift card. Um, again, the tea bag will fit in there just right. And I'm also going to make a little note card to go in there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to attempt to get all my pieces and parts. I don't know what that piece is for. <laughs> let's put that there. All right, so for the note card on the inside, I've got a piece of thick basic white that measures six inches by three and a half inches. And I've just scored that in half at three inches along the six inch side. So th I'm sorry, I scored that at three, not three and a half. So again, six by three and a half, scored at three in the center. And I'm just gonna take that valley score line and turn it into a mountain fold and burnish. 
for a cute little note card there. And then I've got designer series paper. This piece measures two and three quarters by three and one quarter. And for this, I do have it in landscape if it's a directional pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. This is gonna be the easiest little note card ever. It's more just to show you a little trick with the inked and tiled punch pack. So there's that, quick and easy. You don't wanna add a ton of layers to this because you wanna make sure that that's all gonna fit into our little tea bag pocket here. Then I'm gonna grab Calypso Coral ink and a scrap piece of basic white. Okay, so I've got the sentiment, just a note. And if I remember correctly, let me bring in that punch. I want to stamp it on a bit of an angle. This is just gonna help you a little bit when you try to punch it with the punch pack. I'm just gonna put it at an angle here. Again, Calypso Coral Ink. If you didn't stamp it at an angle, you might need to just trim off the corner in order to get the punch to fit. So you'll see as the punch goes in, uh, you wanted to just line, you just want to line that up with just a note. Like so. And with this guy, you can actually just trim off the top and the bottom and create a little sort of sentiment tag here. I'm gonna need that back in a second. I'm just taking my paper snips and just lobbing those off. Reminds me of the old classic label punch, just a shorter version of it, but really simple. And then I'm literally just gonna layer that right on the front there. Really clean and simple, fun way to just give a little note to somebody. We'll dress up the front a little bit more because we've got a little bit more space to be, uh, to have some dimension. But so that really gets that bundle to stretch quite a bit. You can do the same thing with lots of love as well. I love that. And um, congratulations too will fit. Okay. Actually, I say that, but let me confirm. Yes, congratulations will fit as well. Okay. So there's our little note card. You can write your little note there. I'm actually gonna close this with a Velcro dot. You could even just use a mini glue dot. Um, just get a little bit of the tackiness off and that will hold it together just fine. Making a mess, how are we doing? All right, so I love to grab or stick the hook side to the flap and that's the one that's more clear. I didn't show you these up close. You guys are probably getting tired of me <laughs> saying that. Um, these are thin clear fasteners, Velcro. They're 5 8 of an inch in diameter. You could use the 3 8 of an inch as well. And then I'm gonna pull the backing off of the loop side, which is the more opaque side. And then I'm just going to close that envelope. I do like to open it and just press those adhesive Velcro dots in place, like so. Okay, now we're gonna decorate the front. And I've kind of done a couple of things ahead of time. So I cut this out of crushed curry. This is from the Stylish Shapes dies. Love these, these are a staple in my craft room. So Stylish Shapes, you can do windows and cutouts as well. It will add the sort of polka dot or stitching type detail to both the positive and the negative. Then I've got a strip of the, what is the name of it? Always forget. The Inked Botanicals Designer Series paper, and this is seven eighths by three inches. All right, so I'm gonna bring in the other punch. Just show you a little trick here as well. This width here, you can go up to one and an eighth inches wide to be able to fit a strip into this punch. So I do wanna give the punch a similar end to what the sentiment is going to have. So I'm just gonna feed that through the punch. 
Now, this is seven eighths of an inch in width, so it's a little bit narrower than the opening. And I am just centering or lining up kind of top to bottom so that's centered in the punch like that. To punch, and then we get that really cool punched end there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and come back in. Oh, I almost fed it through by habit the whole way. You only want to do the one edge. And I do pinch my punch just a little bit to kind of hold things into place until I make sure it's lined up where I want it, and then I will punch the rest of the way. And we just have a little bit of excess that we just punched off. So I really went right to the edge of the paper there. And then you've got this cool strip, okay? So that I'm gonna go ahead and layer over the crushed curry piece with a little bit of liquid glue. And if you're worried about getting adhesive on your surface, just use the silicone craft mat. I'm just gonna center that. Top to bottom, left to right, like so. And I forgot to mention, if you had a directional pattern, you wanna cut that 7 8 by 3 inch strip in landscape. Okay, so we're starting to build this piece for the front. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a scrap piece of basic white, that one, <laughs> and we're gonna stamp Hello Friend in Calypso Coral. We're gonna punch it out with sort of the starburst looking punch. I'm gonna just center that. Linen thread, that's what I was trying to say. So there's that. And then I'm gonna take my linen thread. Now this is one I think from a kit, but it's the same linen thread that we have, but you'll see that it's super curled. So I'm just gonna take my bone folder I'm sandwiching it between the bone folder and my thumb, and I'm just kind of pulling on it to get some of those curly cues out. So it straightens it out a little bit, okay? And we're gonna do a bit of a faux bow here again, like we did from last week. Let's see, let's do. Just kind of, I'm looping this without tying a knot, essentially, and then I'm just gonna trim off the tail there. All right, so I couldn't find my glue dots from last week. So I opened a new roll, and this roll, as some of you have probably experienced this, the glue dots are on what I call the wrong side. Or is that the right? No, this one's rolled correctly, now that I say that out loud. I'm gonna stick the center of our little faux bow right into that glue dot. So I can kind of show you what it is. We just kind of zigzag, there's no knot there but I'm just put all three strands of linen thread right on that glue dot. It's rolling off of the cardboard here. Then I'm gonna pick up with my take your pick tool and we're just gonna come in and center that bow right on that little designer series paper strip. Now, again, this is a little bit wonky at the moment. So let me get that tail smoothed out a bit. You can also use a flat iron if you happen to have one of those in your craft room, but I do not. I don't think I own a flat iron. All right, I'm just kind of zhuzhing the loops here. And if you need to pick up anything and kind of make a loop bigger, just pick it right up off the glue dot and adjust it like so. So it's kind of hiding underneath there, okay? Now I'm gonna take this and some dimensionals. I'm just gonna take two dimensionals for this and I'm gonna place them at the top and bottom on the back side of our sentiment piece. So that's just gonna, the center of that's gonna layer right over the linen thread. And we'll pop that right over our faux bow here. But I'm also centering in the circle and left to right. Just kind of pull the tails up and down, but cute, right? A little faux bow there. Then I'm just gonna take liquid glue on the back side of our circle here. 
to then just glue it to the front of our tea bag envelope. Just gonna hold that into place. And grab a rhinestone. We'll do a medium size and just pop that right down at the center, at the bottom. Okay, so let me clean up my little mess here. There's our sample. That's tonight's Alive project, but a really, really cute, again, little envelope. Throw in a tea bag, a little note card, or a gift card. I think you could actually put a gift card in here as well. You could load it up with all three. And the envelope's pretty forgiving. You can get it a little pretty thick, but really, really fun. And if you think the tails are a little long, which I do, I'm just gonna pull them down and trim just a little bit. There we go. A little haircut. So there we go. Our little tea bag envelope featuring the Inked Botanicals Suite. Okay, let's jump into our card for today. All right, pieces and parts here. I've got my card base is thick basic white and that measures four and a quarter inches by 11. And I've got that scored in half at five and a half inches along the long side. I'm gonna turn that valley score line into a mountain fold and burnish. And then we're just gonna put that piece off to the side. That will be the last thing we adhere to. Then I've got a piece of regular basic white and this measures three and three quarters by five. And I've got three strips of cardstock here. We've got Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, and Lost Lagoon. And I pulled those colors from um, the designer series paper. That's my inspiration. These are all three quarters of an inch in width, but I've cut them to five and a half. So it's just a half sheet of cardstock. Um, five and a half is gonna give me a little bit of extra room. This is my own preference. You could cut these down to five, but I do like to have a little bit of overhang and then I get a nice clean cut. So I'm gonna bring in the silicone craft mat, although I'm not sure I'm gonna need that. But I wanted to show you how I got these things lined up. So I did grab some grid paper and I just sort of eyeballed and centered the three and three quarters by five piece like so and just made myself a little template. So this where the arrow is, that's the center point. And that's three quarters of an inch in width between those two lines. And that's gonna help me line up one of my cardstock strips. So that means it's gonna be in the center of this piece of basic white. And then I can add the other two strips on either side after I've done that. It's just kind of a trick using grid paper. Now I just cut mine, mine down into a quarter sheet of grid paper. Um, but then I love using these to sort of stamp off onto, make little measurements like this. The grid paper is really, really helpful for this. So leaving that basic white here, I'm gonna come in and I kind of put this in rainbow order. So I'm doing Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, Lost Lagoon but our crushed curry is gonna be the centerpiece. Now, remember, this is a little bit longer, so I'm not sending adhesive all the way to the end of it. And I probably should turn it, you know me, I like to line up things sideways for some reason. So I'm just going to have a little bit of overhang here, but just looking at my grid paper, and that's gonna help me get that right in the center there. Okay. So now I can take away the grid paper because we've got that piece centered. And now I can take the other pieces and I'm gonna line them up right next to it. Again, turning it this way. So I'm gonna take the Calypso Coral and I'm just butting that right up next to, the liquid glue really helps here, but right up next to our crushed curry. Okay, so we don't have much of a seam there at all. And then same thing with Lost Lagoon. Again, I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm gonna butt that right up next to the crushed curry. And I'm just sliding it right up to it. Like so. Okay, so that is in the center of our basic white. And now I can just take my paper snips and flip this over I'm just gonna trim off the excess. 
So keeping my blade close to the basic white, and then you get that nice clean cut edge there. And same thing on the opposite side, like so, okay? All right, now we're gonna do a little bit of heat embossing. Gonna bring in my tools for that. I've got it plugged in in the back. So give me a moment. All right, so I've got my embossing buddy. This is an original. This is the first thing and only thing I bought as a customer with Stampin' Up! And then I became a demonstrator and the rest is history. I just like to rub that over the surface to get rid of any static or oils from my hands. We've got the white embossing powder, which comes in the basics. It's a trio that's white, clear, and black. I did put in a silica gel packet in there to try to help with it not having moisture here in Atlanta. And then I've got my Versamark stamp pad. Now, ahead of time, I set up my stamp positioning tool just so that I could get the flowers from the stamp set in the center. And I do like to stamp twice with Versamark so that I've got some good coverage. Now you'll see I'm reusing my grid paper here from last week's project. I'm gonna put that right up in the corner. I'm gonna ink up this floral stamp. This is from Inked and Tiled. So we're gonna stamp it once. Oh, I'm gonna make a big old mess. You can see that embossing powder going everywhere. So stamp it once. This would also be beautiful with just the Versamark. You see you get that sort of watermarked look. That's an option as well, but I wanted to see the pop of the white. So we'll just stamp that twice. We get some good sticky Versamark on there for the embossing powder. All right, so I've got this tiny container and this big card front, but it should fit. I'm just going to put it at a steep angle here and just pour the powder right down, right into the container again. Do a little tap here, and then I'm just gonna tap off camera here just to get any of the excess flyaway powder, okay? Now let me bring in my heat tool. and we'll get the magic going. It, this still makes me so happy to watch it happen. All right, so a little bit of noise in the mic. And we'll heat up the tool until that starts to turn. I'm gonna try to make sure I can capture that on camera for you if you've not seen it before. All right, so you'll start to see the white get bright. Trying not to burn my fingers here. <laughs> there we go. You see that starting to turn? Sorry, it's focusing on the wrong things, the camera. Now, if you get a little bit of warping with your paper, just try heating it from the other side. That should flatten it out more for you. All right, so there we go. We've got that pop of that beautiful floral stamp. I love that. Now, let's go ahead and bring back in our card base. And I'm actually going to, using liquid glue, glue this whole panel down because there is a little bit of warping with the heat embossing here. Probably a combination of that and the liquid glue as well from our strips. So I'm gonna do a bead of glue all around the outside edge and then I'm also gonna go up the middle. Like that. Hear the kids talking. All right, so I'm gonna press from the front just till I get that lined up where I want it, and then I'm actually gonna flip it over and put pressure from the top. 
All good. There we go, like so, okay. All right, so next I've got a piece of the designer series paper, the Inked Botanicals, and this one measures seven eighths by, gotta flip my page to the second project, seven eighths by three and a half, okay? And I picked a pattern that's got multiple colors in it. We're gonna do the same thing with that punch. Come in and punch from either side to give that really cool edge. And again, you can go up to one and an eighth in width. That's the sort of height of that center section of this punch. There we go. Oh, leaving that out because I'm going to use that again in a second. And then scrap paper, we are going to stamp the sentiment. Thank you, again in Calypso Coral. And punch this out. I love, I love the way that the U is off to the right, okay? All right, so we're gonna do a faux bow again. Let me look at my sample just so I remember. All right, so I'm gonna use liquid glue. I'm gonna put this piece down first as sort of our anchor piece. And actually, I'm going to flip it that way so the Calypso Coral is off to the right since we've got the Calypso Coral there on the left. Go about there. I'm centering it from right to left. And just lining it up straight with the bottom edge here. Like that. Okay, and bringing in the linen thread again. Get those curly cues out. And then again, same thing with our loops. And kind of watch which way the linen thread is twisting. That'll kind of help you place that a little bit more. Grabbing my glue dots here. Actually, let me trim off a tail. one wants to slide off of that cardboard roll in the center. There we go. Hold that in place. I keep putting my tools in back in their home spot and then I think I can't find them because I'm not used to look, putting them back. <laughs> um, all right, well, I'm actually going to put this off to the right side here like that. Probably trim the ends a little bit. Then same thing with our sentiment piece. <laughs> I'm like unconsciously putting things away and not checking there first. <laughs> I know I'm not alone in that. All right, so same thing. I put it on the top and the bottom. And we're going to center the points on that seam of the crushed curry and lost lagoon. To me, that was where this sentiment was most pleasing to the eye, but everybody's got kind of a different eye when it comes to paper crafting. So we've got our little bow there. I'm gonna trim off the ends just a little bit. And then of course, the piece de resistance, a rhinestone, because you all know me. <laughs> we'll do the large one here, because we've got a little bit of extra space, like, there. All right, and there we have our inked botanicals, heat embossed sort of uh, colored strips card. 
I love the way that looks. With a little touch of the designer series paper using that awesome punch. And you can decorate as you like on the inside. I tend to leave the inside of my cards naked there, but so those are really identical to each other. And then we've got our tea bag envelopes. And those are tonight's projects. So thank you so much. We're gonna jump into tonight's Q&A. So give me a moment to tee that up. Let's see. Q. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Ramona. Don't worry about the chatter. We love it. Have you recovered from your trip yet? We have recovered from Norway, I think. But we're still tired. Well, we're tired from our weekend to Wilmington. But it, it's a good thing. It was a good celebration. So it was fun to celebrate Logan and Annalise. Um, we're getting there. I've got another trip this weekend. I'm headed to Aiken, South Carolina for that stamping event, um, the tea party, which I cannot wait. And then I'm not traveling again until the end of August. So it'll be good to be home for a little while. Oh, the gift card one, Yvette, that was the, um, the tea bag uh, envelope fits a gift card. You absolutely could do that too, Kay, if you didn't want to trim off the edge. Personally, on an envelope, I kind of like that flat edge, but absolutely, you could round the corner as well. It might not be quite enough, but it'll be really close, so absolutely try the corner rounder on that. Great suggestion. So, Patty, I tend to do that because the flap is going, I don't know, for me, I typically always put, put the hook side on the piece of the project that's gonna be opened and closed the most. So typically on the flap, um, that's just sort of been what I've done with Velcro dots. Um, not necessarily any rhyme or reason other than I feel like that's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a good reason for that. I've just always done the hook side on the movable piece or the piece that's gonna be opened and closed. So, but both will work. Um, let's see. Just a trick I've learned, you can give the fuzzy side of the Velcro a haircut so it, so it doesn't hold so much and you don't have to worry that you'll pull one side and tear up the paper. That's a really cool suggestion too, Laura. Thank you. Give your loop side a bit of a haircut. I love that. And it's not quite as, um, sticky. Oh, Brother Pixie? I don't know. Is he on? Have you seen him on? Greg may have forgotten. <laughs> um... I have not tried the additional pieces yet, Yvette. I think that they were not available when the catalog was live, but I haven't checked to see if they're available yet. Um, so no, I haven't tried them because I haven't ordered them yet, but there are some additional pieces. For next comment, I like to think too. The, um, which one? So her next comment. From Yvette? Question, yeah. Okay. Um, what was the favorite thing you did on your cruise trip and what was your favorite meal? Oh boy. Okay. The favorite thing we did, I honestly think it was the, um, the sky lift. That was pretty cool. What was your favorite thing? Brian's thinking. He has his thinking face on. It wasn't the, sky lift. It wasn't the he's afraid of heights. So the sky lift, he was very brave for that. He did it for, you. He did it for me. Um, my second favorite thing was probably the musical on the ship, but I dragged Brian to that too because he's not a musical <laughs> person. <laughs> yeah, what was your favorite thing? I don't know. I like the bus thing. You like the open top bus? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. The, the top was not open on the bus. We did a quick bus tour where we got to stop at a glacier lake, and that was Brian's favorite. It was all good. It's hard to pick a favorite, but I did love the view from the sky lift was pretty breathtaking. I didn't care how cold I was. That was very cool, but I was ready to come down. <laughs> Um, great question. And my favorite meal, um, probably the Jamie Oliver's meal. Absolutely. Yeah. We had Italian on the ship. Mary Fish treated us to that with her team. And we, we got not only what we ordered, but the waiter kept bringing us additional food. Like he brought lamb chops for everybody. And I am not, I don't do lamb chops. However, I tried one and I was like, these are the best thing ever. So for someone who doesn't like lamb, I loved the lamb chops, but yeah, the, the Italian dinner. And then my second favorite was our sushi night. We had a sushi night and that was really good too. But the, yeah, the Italian was the bomb.com for sure. <laughs> Great question. Um, oh yeah. So you linked to a couple fun fold cards for Yvette. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, 
Do the punched out pieces fit together in any way? They do, and let me actually demonstrate that really quickly. I'm gonna bring this back down. Um, let me punch a couple things. Punch, punch. I'm gonna grab a couple different, ooh, that one's really locked. Let's see, just gonna grab a couple patterns of paper. So I'm gonna do one with that and one with this. You could absolutely, in the catalog actually, um, let me see if that's on the page. But yeah, these absolutely fit together and you can kind of see that on this catalog sample, Laura. So they've got the, um, the starburst ones are popped up on dimensionals here. And then sort of, I call them kind of the cross or the X's are just glued straight. So you have that kind of dimension there. I'm, I'm turning this like you can see the dimension in the catalog, but you cannot. But yeah, absolutely they fit together. So a really cool, you can put together like a really cool fun mosaic with different designer series papers or cardstock colors. I love that about this punch pack. All right, let's come back to the Q&A here. Awesome question. Is it better to put it in another container with the silica bag or is it okay keeping it in the original container? I think you could absolutely keep it in the original container, Yvette. The, um, the only challenge you'll run into is I'm not sure the silica bag will fit in a brand new jar of embossing powder. I don't think there's enough space in the jars, but um, I typically... For me, I put the embossing powder into a larger container just because I feel like I make less of a mess. Absolutely, with the smaller containers, you want to use like a folded piece of paper to put underneath as you sprinkle the powder on so you can kind of like fold it and dump it back into the container. Or we've got the embossing additions toolkit as well that has the little funnel piece that will work. Um, but yeah, you could. Th there's no reason not to put the silica packet in the original container. You just might not have a lot of space until you start using some of it. I remember you saying your first purchase from Stampin' Up! was your embossing buddy because you really like heat embossing. Do I still heat emboss a lot? I don't heat emboss as much as I used to. Some of it is just because um, been, I've been quick to make cards, but it is still one of my favorite... Um, do, do I do a lot of heat embossing? No, a lot, but... <laughs> More than you do? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Um, it's still one of my favorite techniques, heat embossing. I just, it's so magical to watch the powder turn into um, just a beautiful, glossy, stamped image. So I don't do it as much as I used to. At least once or twice a month. Yeah. I love it still. Mm. I don't think I'll ever get rid of my original embossing, buddy. I love that thing. <laughs> uh. The card color combo is beautiful. What helps you decide what colors to use? Should I get a color wheel? Um, Laura, honestly, I take most of my color inspiration from our designer series papers. I kind of let Stampin' Up! do the work for me. Uh, they just, almost every time new pattern papers come out, there's a color combination that I would have never thought of, but I love what it looks like together. Another example is the in colors. Somehow they always pick five in colors that go so well together. Um, but I mostly get my color inspiration from the designer series papers. Just about every project that I create has a patterned paper in it. And so that's sort of where I take my cue. Um, you could absolutely get a color wheel. I think that will take a little bit more of a thought process to try to you know, piece together which colors from Stampin' Up! Um, would match the most with a col with color wheel choices. Um, but Stampin' Up! also does offer a color coach. Um, and you can certainly, um, I can link to that as well. Um, but it just gives kind of different color combination ideas for our colors. And there's also like color buddies, like for example, Misty Moonlight and Night of Navy that go really well together. Um, but again, DSP is kind of my go-to for color combos. Uh, yes, I think I answered that, Betty. Yes, the pieces will absolutely layer on top of each other um, and they nestle together in a great mosaic together. So I love this, um, the punch bundle. It is the inked and tiled bundle and it's a punch pack. So you get both punches in the bundle. Okay. Ooh, my favorite color tone to work in. So Nicole, my hands down favorite color family 
is the brights. I'm a brights girl. Um, so any of the brights, I love, love, love the brights. Um, I don't know if that's what you're asking as far as color tone, but yeah, brights are kind of my jam. So um, I love them, even though that they've kind of been um, mixed up a little bit with the new color refresh. I still love the brights. It's my favorite. So great, great questions tonight, everybody. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed tonight's live stream and you got a tip or trick or two, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and ring that bell so you get all notifications when I've got new videos coming up. It helps us here on YouTube. We will be live again next week for episode 286. That will be next Wednesday, June 14th, 2023 at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Don't forget, we've got our designer series paper sale going on for the month of June, as well as the Starter Kit Plus. You can get $155 in product for only $99 by joining the Stampin' Up! family, and I'd love to have you join my team of paper pixies. As always, if, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at support at thepaperpixie.com. And don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and we'll see you next week. Take good care. Bye.